Hey everyone, I just wanted to go through a complete rundown of everything that I'm carrying in my pack for when I'm whitetail hunting here in Pennsylvania, New York, Ohio, some of the big woods, Appalachian region, um, when I'm doing you know mobile hunting, hanging hunt style in late October to November. So I'm gonna go through my entire gear, what I have for all day sits. So let's get started with the bino and optic system. So using a bino harness from marsupial gear, I'm actually waiting till they come back in stock with a smaller harness because as you'll be able to see here, this one's quite a bit bigger. It's meant for my bigger binos. But uh, inside here, I'm carrying my Maven B3 8x30 binos, just a small, compact, super light. I can keep it on my chest at all times while I'm in the saddle. And in addition to that, on in the front of this harness, I'm carrying just this little iPhone charger SD, or excuse me, iPhone SD reader, so I can read my SD cards in my camera. I can come up, pull it out, check the card real quick, put it back in as I'm going into my stand. On the side here, on the side of the pouch, I have milkweed. So I actually got this from the hunting public. Just bought it, it was like $15 or so, maybe, maybe even less. And uh, it's a milkweed pack, it comes fully stocked. Works really nice for being able to check your thermals and your wind when on the stand. And then in addition to that, on the back of the bino harness, as I'm walking in, I put my Smith & Wesson 40 caliber. Um, it's a shield. And uh, I like this little gun. It's very nice and compact, easy to pack in here. Slips in behind, easy to draw. So as, as you're walking, you're able to pull it out for any uh, sort of emergency situations there. So that's always here on me at all times. So that runs through my entire bino harness system. To kind of get into a little bit more of the pack itself and what I'm taking in. All right, so keep in mind, this is for a hunt in Pennsylvania, late October, early November. You're looking at, you know, mornings around freezing, might get up into the high 40s during the day. This is kind of what my setup looks like for that. Um, so actually before I dive into the pack, I'm gonna go into what else I have in here. So I keep this, um, Sika doesn't make this anymore, but it's a really nice like mobile changing station and I also keep my bow in here. So Okay, so inside here I have my Prime Black 3 bow. So this bow is set up as 33 actual axle. I have a 27 and a half inch draw, relatively short. Um, running the Vector Custom Shop HMR Arrows. So awesome arrow company here. They're uh, out of Michigan, small company. Build your arrows just for you. And I have the Iron Will S125 Wide Series Broadheads on the tip there with a Garmin Zero A1i bow sight. I really liking this thing so far. Um, just makes it nice, especially during the rut when you're gonna be having deer come by quick, coming through not on trails, ranges that you might not be aware of. Super nice to, to be able to have that. Um, in addition, tight spot quiver. Been running these for five or six years now. Keep the arrows tight in there. You can micro adjust each one to keep it inside your quiver. And then also the Hamski Trinity Hunter Rest. So I have this rest, I have a custom engraved with East Meets West on it. And uh, just, it's it's super nice. I like the cable, or the limb driven rest, excuse me, because you know no matter what, you're not gonna, when your string stretches, you're not gonna have timing issues. It's always gonna pull back, it's always gonna be simple. And if you did have a problem, it's really easy to fix even in the field. And then the last part of my bow here is my stabilizer. So I got a stokerized stasis. My bow is pretty well balanced out as it is, but the Garmin Zero sight's a little bit heavier than normal. So I add a little bit of weight here to the back and seems to balance that out very nicely. And then inside my pack is where I keep all my different clothing layers. When I'm packing in, I'm using uh, I'm wearing a Sika Core lightweight top 
and then the Fanatic hoodie. And then on the bottoms, I'm usually wearing the Equinox pant. And that's what I'm wearing in just about any time of the year. Keeping it light, doesn't matter how cold, then I can kinda, I'm able to breathe, not work up too much of a sweat, especially when you have some longer walks, one to two miles in from the truck. So that's what I have on me as I'm going in. I keep a set of gloves in my pocket, um, the Sika Merino gloves, keep them in my pocket and just move in. So now we're gonna get into the base of the pack itself and everything I'm carrying. So this is what my pack looks like as I'm going in. It's quite a bit larger than most people's are, but like I said, I'm planning on staying all day long. I'm packing in my layers. I've got my saddle in here, but uh, let's just go through a complete rundown from the outside to the inside. On the top, I have the straps on top of the Sika cargo box. So this is the, the pack that I worked directly with Chris Derrick at Sika Gear to help field test and make this the perfect mobile hunting pack. And it is for me at least, it carries a lot of stuff. Um, able to put things in it, strap things to the outside of it, and it really has endless possibilities. So on top of it, I have strapped the Stratus jacket and bibs, which is my just about overall system for outerwear that I'm that I'm wearing during the rut. I mean, I'm, this I'm wearing this system with, I'd say 90% of the time throughout the, the bow season. So to take that off, I got a couple straps here on the top. I unlatch it. So once I get to the tree, I'm able to take it off. I throw the bibs on, and then I'll, sometimes I'll throw the jacket on right away. Most of the time I won't. I'll put it back in my pack. I'll show you in a second here, but until I get climbed up and get situated so I don't you know, work up any more of a sweat while I'm climbing up. So these straps just tuck right back into the pack here. And that's what I have on the outside here. So after I do that, I throw the bibs on, then it's time to start taking apart the outside of my pack to get ready to climb the tree. So on the front here, I have the tethered Predator platform. So I have a custom spray painted on the front of the pack here. Just one buckle is all I need to take off. Nice and quietly, this slips out. And this one I just have seated down inside. I'm able to pull that out grab that I'll set this off to the side for the meantime and then I'll go into taking apart the sticks so I have the timber ninja the c1 carbon fiber sticks they're 20 inch model I got one of them with a retractable eater did a whole video on kind of going through these you can check out on my channel so these are all strapped in here on the side with some little uh, quick disconnect lashing clips here keeps it very secure doesn't make any noise so I'm able to pull these ones out grab this off no time at all and I got the sticks here so as I showed you in the other video they just come apart real nice and simple and then when they do make noise they sound kind of like rattling antlers so I have those there and get ready to set on the tree and I would do the exact same thing on the other side but just for the, the point of talking here I'll just show that put these straps back in its place able to cinch everything back up all right now to go into the center of the pack and now I'm getting ready like I said I got the sticks out I've got the the platform out now I'm ready to climb up into the tree so right on the top inside the pack here I've got my tethered phantom saddle system so I've got that here so I would essentially throw this on and step into it and then I'd use this little carabiner here to clip my tethered um, platform right on the side of me and then I put the sticks on the side of that to climb up the tree but that's for uh, another video here so I'm just showing you some of the stuff I have in, inside and then in addition to that I've got these knee pads they are from Ulta um, I just found them on Amazon. Really nice, comfortable, quiet on the tree. So I'll throw those on over top of my bibs and essentially it's time to start climbing up the tree at that point. So once I get in the tree, I'm able to, I guess, 
before I start going up into the tree, I strap my bow to the outside of the pack here and climb up the tree. So how that bow connects. Just slip it same place in that the saddle went in. Then you take these straps. I run this around the outside. Loosen that up a little bit. Strap that down. There's another buckle right on the top here that pulls out of the pack. And I run that around through the top here. Get it to its desired length. Put the K clips in, cinch it up, and now you got the bow on your pack ready to go up the tree. But, all right, so now to go back to the contents of the pack. All right, so now to open up the pack and get back inside it. So inside here, this is called, it's almost like your typical bucket design that Sika had with some of their other packs. But I like to hang it right from a hook here and I use that, I have a, I use the same hook that I had on my hip going up with my saddle platform. Once I have my stand in place, I take that off, wrap it through the black diamond carabiner, which is what I keep inside of here. So I got the black diamond daisy chain, wrap that around the tree. And essentially what I do is I wrap this through on the tree, put that clip here hang my pack from one side and then I have a hero clip on the other side that hangs my bow. So then I have a bow hanger and everything there. Nothing to screw in the tree which you can't do on public land. So I'm able to keep everything legal and easily organized that way. So I hooked that through there and now to go into what's inside the pack itself. So this folds down in the front. I have Celsius MIDI, which is a very packable insulation layer that I will pull this out, throw this on underneath the Stratus, depending on how cold it is, and then throw my Stratus jacket on over top, and I'm ready to go as far as is uh, being you know set up and warm in the tree. You wanna you wanna be able to put on your insulation layers as quickly as possible when you're up in the tree to be able to retain that heat, especially when it's cold out. So that's a, an important thing to know, especially when you're walking in a ways. So in the bottom of the pack, after the Celsius MIDI, I have my kill kit. So this is similar to the kit that I carry out west. I just have it streamlined a little bit. So I, it's just a, a Kafaru um, bag here. So I have one of their waterproof bags that I put everything in. And inside that, I keep some reflective paracord. So a lot of times in the field, like when you're in the mountains hunting you don't want to drag a deer out just because of the difficulty of doing that unless you're able to get some help but for me i've found it easier to be able to pack the animal out so i want to quarter it up in the field quarter and uh, take the quarters and pack them out in my backpack as i would when uh say for example you're out west elk hunting mule deer hunting something along those lines so the paracord allows me to tie the meat up around say a makeshift meat pole or limb that's going across the trees and let it air out while I'm cutting up the rest of the meat. And in addition to that, I have some caribou game bags inside which keeps the bugs everything off of the meat and allows them to breathe. And then my iron will ultra light knife. So I have this here, it's the same um, blade that's on my iron will broadhead. So that's where the next thing will come in handy here. I've got a little tiny carbide sharpener that works for both my broadheads and for the knife itself. So it's dual purpose there. And then lastly, I keep a little packet of Mountain Ops Yeti in here. And I do that because it's just, it's a, they're pre-workout. So it gives me a little boost before packing out the meat, gives me some energy. Just pour that into my water and go. And then in this kit, so it's just a little Kuyu dry bag inside of there. So I got 
a roll of toilet paper. I have a thing of hand sanitizer. And also I carry a bag of wet wipes. Also inside the main bucket part, I carry some hand warmers. I carry the super warmers to be able to put in my boot covers, which I'll show you in a minute here. And then a couple of the smaller hand warmers to stuff in my hand pockets to make sure I stay warm uh, while I'm up in the tree. Again, the key is to retain heat. You don't want to lose it and then try to get it back. You want to retain that heat that you've already generated as you're walking in. All right, inside this small front pocket, which can fold down or you can keep it up, is where I keep a lot of my trail camera gear. I keep spare batteries. I keep my SD cards, all of that inside this pack. And then on the back wall, there's a bunch of different organizations here on this back panel of the cargo box in which I carry the Primos, the great big cam bleak call carry uh, a little pair of Wicked Tree Gear snippers in case I'm going up a tree and something's in my way I just need to clip it out. I'll carry that as well. And then also just, I have this little sticky holsters. So once I'm up in the tree, I don't need to have my pistol behind me. So to keep that out of the way so that my, my, uh, so that my saddle doesn't interfere with it. I take the pistol out and I stuff it in here and I put it right in the back wall of my pack. And then although my, my Garmin bow sight has a rangefinder built in, I do carry an additional rangefinder in this marsupial gear pouch, just in case I want to range things out at a distance while I'm sitting there rather than having to pick up my bow and check some areas. But for the most time, I'm not really using this much. It's just a, uh, something I've been carrying with inside the pack here. And below that in the side pouch, I do have a bow rope. I don't really need that for anything, but just in case that I do or I drop something or name a reason, it's always nice to have this rope here. All right, now to dive into the rest of the pack here. So. When I hang it around my tree, so I'm hanging it on my right side while I'm in my saddle. So this pocket right here that's closest to me is something I wanna be able to have quick access things in there. So of course, the first thing I have are these Hot Mox insulated boot covers. They don't make these anymore. I found this pair on eBay for $13 and they're getting really tore up. So if anybody has some sort of boot covers that work good, I've seen the Arctic Shield ones are pretty bulky. Some of the other ones, these are super lightweight. I just stuff a body warmer in here and put them over either my uninsulated or lightly insulated leather boots and keeps my feet warm down to some very cold temperatures. And in addition to that, I keep the Sick of Gear Flash hoodie. It's a wind stopper piece that's highly, highly water resistant. So um, for the most part, my strata system is gonna keep me, you know, dry enough, even if it rains for a while, but just in case we get a quick hard rain I just throw this on um, the the Sitka downpour system if I know it's gonna rain is what I'm gonna carry but this flash hoodie literally weighs six ounces so that's why I like to carry that when possible because it weighs literally nothing and also this is where I keep all my snacks so got the the mountain ops uh, protein bars here so I carry those and also, Heather's Choice Packeroons, Black Espresso, and all the, and also these F-Bomb Nut Butter Packets. So they're high in fat, they have a lot of calories, they just give you that necessary energy boost that you need when you're in the field. Okay, so that rounds out the side pouch here. On the other side, which I don't have any here currently, but I normally, um, would run two Exodus trail cameras that I put down in that side pack. All right, so that covers all the outside pieces. Now in the top lid here, I have my Mad Grunt Call. So it's a Mad Growl. They don't make this specific model anymore, but I really like it because it's a real deep tone grunt and it's a lot different than some of the other like tube calls that I just don't really like the sound of them. So that's in my top portion here. 
There's a little hidden pocket that has orange that you can strap over the top of the pack if you're coming out or if you're in gun season. And also this is where I keep my pen and my license and my tags are all kept down in this pocket safe and I never have to open it otherwise so you don't have to worry about losing that. In this pack it's where I got my electronics. I have the dark energy charger and some spare batteries. I keep headlamp triple A's that also work for my Garmin Zero Bow Sight. Um, but uh, I really shouldn't need them for that. So I have everything kept inside of here. And then to round out the top lid, there's another little small pack here in which I carry this Filson wool hat. I, uh, I don't know, I just like this hat. If it's really windy, I'll use my my Sika Stratus hat, which has windstopper built in, but I just like a general wool hat, and this has been kind of my, my lucky hat. And then also I keep a Black Diamond Storm headlamp. So this thing is extremely bright. I always keep it um, set up with fresh uh, AAA batteries and works really well coming in and out of the field. And then the last thing I have in here are the Sika Fanatic gloves. So they have the fingers missing on the pointer finger and your thumb. Just always a nice go-to, another lightweight glove to, to utilize. And then on the side here of the pack, I've got a water bottle holder. So I use my East Meets West Nalgene. It fits perfectly right inside there. So I have that on that side. Uh, on the hip belt here is a small pouch. And this is where I'm carrying my knock on, knock to it release. So I keep that in there. It's a handheld so I don't lose it as I'm walking in in the dark and I'll pull it out once I get up in the tree. And then also I got all the keys to my trail cameras and I keep them right there to be able to again access them quickly without taking off my pack. So there it is. That's everything that's in my pack for hunting the whitetail rut. And I wish everyone good luck as they come into the season. If you have any questions on gear, Feel free to leave some comments below on your questions, as well as you know, shoot me an email at any time. Feel free to do that. If you did like some of this stuff or wanna know where to purchase some of these things, I'll have a link in uh, the blog post that's in the caption below, as well as all my gear that I do purchase from Amazon or I do get from Amazon. I have an online store there. If you do use the links that I have provided in the Amazon store and also on the blog post, I do make a small commission off of that. So I really, really appreciate that uh, you do that to help me keep putting out some of this stuff and creating these videos. So thanks everyone and good luck.